Good evening. Thank you for joining us. On Capitol Hill, the January 6th committee providing new details on Donald Trump's last ditch efforts to stay in the White House after President Biden won the 2020 election. President Trump's words possibly inciting an angry and violent mob to break into the Capitol, coming dangerously close to then Vice President Pence. Here's ABC's chief Washington correspondent, Jonathan Carl. Just 40 feet from the mob. Make no mistake about the fact that the vice president's life was in danger. Today, newly released images and information revealing just how close the January 6 rioters got to the vice president of the United States. Nothing but a traitor, and he deserves to burn with the rest of them. What the president wanted the vice president to do was not just wrong. It was illegal and unconstitutional. In meticulous detail, the January 6th committee outlined Donald Trump's brazen effort to force his vice president to do something he clearly had no authority to do. Trump wanted him to single-handedly overturn the election. Pence had told him no, but on the morning of January 6th, Trump called him one more time to demand he do it. When I entered the office the second time, he was on the telephone with who I later found out to be was the, the vice president. Could you hear the vice president or only hear the president's end? Only hear the president's end. And at some point it started off as a calmer tone and everything and then became heated. The conversation was, was pretty heated. It was a different tone than I'd heard him take um, with the vice president before. To my memory, I remember hearing the word wimp. Either he called him a wimp I don't remember if he said, you are a wimp, you'll be a wimp. Wimp is the word I remember. It's sad to hear that the president of the United States would go so far as to threaten the vice president, or even call him names, someone who had been completely loyal to the president. But on that day, Vice President Pence's loyalty was to the United States Constitution, uh, not to one man or one person. Less than an hour later, Trump addressed the massive crowd outside the White House. Aides testified his written speech made no mention of Pence. But when he spoke, Trump repeatedly and falsely told the crowd Pence was the one person who could overturn Biden's election victory. Mike Pence is going to have to come through for us. And if he doesn't, that will be a, a sad day for our country. And Mike Pence, I hope you're going to stand up for the good of our Constitution and for the good of our country. And if you're not, I'm going to be very disappointed in you, I will tell you right now. Trump was still speaking when Pence publicly announced he would defy Trump, remaining loyal to the Constitution instead. We're coming for you! The reaction of the mob was instantaneous. I'm hearing reports that Pence caved. No I'm way. telling you, if Pence caved, we're going to drag through the streets. You politicians are going to get drugged through the streets. Yeah. Trump watched it all unfold on television from the White House. Aides testified Chief of Staff Meadows went to tell him about the violence. Republican lawmakers and White House aides urged him to get his supporters to stand down. Instead, at 2.24 p.m., the president sent out a message attacking his vice president. Mike Pence didn't have the courage to do what should have been done to protect our country and our Constitution. In the White House, Trump's own aides were shocked by Trump's tweet. The situation was already bad, and so it felt like he was pouring gasoline on the fire by tweeting that. We just heard that Mike Pence is not going to reject any fraudulent elector votes! As the mob broke into the Capitol, Pence was evacuated from the Senate floor to a nearby office, huddling with his family. Then, with the rioters just 40 feet away, the Secret Service rushed the vice president, his family, and top aides to a secure underground location. Pence chief counsel Greg Jacob was with him. Does it surprise you to see how close the mob was to the evacuation route that you took? I could hear the din of the rioters in the building while we moved, but... I don't think I was aware that they were as close as that. Make no mistake about the fact that the vice president's life was in danger. A recent court filing by the Department of Justice explains that a confidential informant from the Proud Boys told the FBI that the Proud Boys would have killed Mike Pence if given a chance. 
The Secret Service had the vice presidential motorcade in the garage, waiting to take Pence to safety away from the Capitol. The vice president did not want to take any chance that um, the world would see the vice president of the United States fleeing the United States Capitol. He was determined that we would complete the work that we had um, set out to do that day. The committee showed these never before seen photos, the vice president working the phones in that concrete garage for some three hours without even a chair to sit in. Mr. Jacob, did Donald Trump ever call the vice president to check on his safety? He did not. Mr. Jacob, how did Vice President Pence and Mrs. Pence react to that? With frustration. It goes to the heart of our system of self-government, the existential threat that the American Constitution faced on January 6th, not from insurrectionists trying to commit violence, but actually from Trump and his immediate team crazy, as they called them, who were trying to ignore the Constitution, hold on to power, regardless of what the American people said. Even after the attack, after the mob was cleared from the Capitol building, Trump and his allies kept the pressure on Pence. Shortly before he was to certify the election, John Eastman, a lawyer advising Trump, emailed the vice president's counsel, saying it was not too late for Pence to change his mind. What was Vice President Pence's reaction when you showed him the email where Dr. Eastman, after the attack on the Capitol, still asked that the vice president delay certification and send it back to the states? He said, that's rubber room stuff. What did you interpret that to mean? That that was certifiably crazy. Mr. Jacob testified that the vice president was never going to go along with Trump's scheme. Pence knew Trump was asking him to do something illegal and something no other vice president had ever attempted. No vice president in 230 years of history had ever claimed to have that kind of authority. The committee deposed Mr. Eastman. I assert my Fifth Amendment right against uh, being compelled to be a witness against myself. He pled the fifth more than 100 times. Eastman continues working to overturn the 2020 election, attempting to pressure state legislatures to decertify its electors. It's an absurd interpretation to believe that Mike Pence had the authority to single-handedly either send it back to the states or reject the election results. The committee wanted to make it clear that this isn't some ongoing legal debate, but that this was just a, an absurd claim from a lawyer close to Donald Trump that no one should take seriously. All of this may end with no criminal charges for Trump or anybody in his inner circle, but the committee says this is about setting the record straight for history. Former Judge Michael Luddick, a conservative legal scholar and occasional advisor to Mike Pence ended today's hearing with a warning, saying that without a reckoning, what happened on January 6th could happen again with even more dire consequences. Donald Trump and his allies and supporters are a clear and present danger to American democracy. The former president and his allies are executing that blueprint for 2024 in open and plain view of the American public. Our thanks to Joe.